Well, we got to talk about Wukong all over again because it seems IGN has a different take on this matter and Kutaku is following along with the new narrative. Well, let's start this out with the one, the only Vera Dark, screen rant even, knocked down by Black Myth Wukong score due to lack of inclusivity and diversity. You know, a character that can shapeshift into anything that you want while spewing lies about the studio that originated with IGN. Yes, IGN put out an article and PC Gamer followed along about how the studio apparently was sexist and misogynistic, even though they had women developers working on the game. A narrative that was proven false. And now it continues down the road with Screen Rant pushing it along. They're also saying things you know, lacking in inclusivity and diversity here at the bottom. Gameplay becomes repetitive over time and the game performance is unpolished. These are the review side of things. Now, the article, while my analysis and review of Black Myth Wukong remain focused on gameplay, it's important to mention the controversy surrounding the game studio and the reports of misogyny and sexism from the developers. And of course, Grom's showcasing how Kotaku spins this, showing that the IGN report, once again, is the number one thing in mind for these activist-style journalism trying to push the narrative that this game was developed by developers that apparently were sexist, even and it doesn't include enough diversity in the game. I don't know what's more diverse than a shapeshifter in the first place, but where do you really want this narrative to go? Black Myth Wukong was first announced in 2020 via a short but impressive looking gameplay trailer. Since then, hype around the game has steadily built thanks to the slick combat and gorgeous videos However, an IGN report in 2023 alleged that some top individuals at Game Science, the studio behind the game, had participated in an awful online discussion about women and fostered a toxic culture in the studio or at the studio. This game got rave reviews from almost everyone out there, but Screen Rant is picking, out, picking it apart on every level. And it's now to the point that they've actually removed the editor's or the author's name of their article due to their safety. Can you not put out an article now without being able to stand on your own two feet? You know, I, I, I've had bad takes. I, I've had takes that people absolutely despise, but I still stand by what I say. And I'm still going to stand by what I say every day. I might not like certain things, and I have good points to it because I'm not the only one that doesn't like certain things. But this from Screen Rant, well, you put out an article that is against the narrative. You want to stand on your own two feet against the narrative. Then be there. Stand there. Stand up and own what you said. If you're not going to own what you said, then why are you making the article? Why are you putting it out there? Black Myth Wukong Review, the Souls-like action hype train is a little off the rails. They, they don't like it. They don't like it. They give it like three out of five, which is a, kind of abysmal for a game. Combat is engaging and addictive. Well, that sounds like it's a positive. What else do they put? Uh, Wukong does not make us make use of its environment. So it has a pretty environment that you get to run around in. What more do you want? You know, there is certain things that I don't like in games. One is a game being completely linear. If I am in a absolutely immersive environment and I'm not able to walk around in that environment and explore the environment for what it is and I have a straight line through the entire thing, then you're wasting all these amazing graphics in the game to something that could be something more. So if it's not making use of the environment, I can understand that type of thing. But from the trailers that I saw, you move around a lot in the environment. So I'm not entirely sure. The environment makes it far less, more tedious to get to certain bosses. Well, that means you're exploring the environment and it's not linear. That's what it's supposed to be like. That's what Elden Ring is like. The environment is so immense. You, you've got to figure out ways to get to certain places. Why wouldn't you like that? Boss arenas are equally shallow. Bosses are easier than expected. Well, you know, the biggest complaint about Elden Ring is it's too hard. 
People are upset with Elden Ring because it's too hard. And I have to say, there is certain points in Elden Ring that frustrates the hell out of me. But the hard version of Elden Ring, once you get through it, then you have an actual true sense of accomplishment in that game. You have a real passion to be able to play through that game and be able to beat certain bosses. Environment choices don't work out. So what do you mean? The problematic placement of shrines. Why, what, what's wrong with shrines? I'm guessing they're more like a save point. Why would they be problematic if you're able to save at shrines or something like that? I, I don't know. Yeah, these vital rest points are inconsistently placed, showcasing the lack of consideration and strategic throughout uh, how players can most effectively travel. Well, it's a game about exploration. So are are the points that you have here, are they not more for the ex exploration than they are about being able to fast travel? If that me if this means the game is placing these in certain locations like that, and you've got to go through the steps to go through certain things again, it means it's going to have a little level of difficulty, and that's good for the player. That means the replayability of the game is going to be there. You're going to miss things the first time through 100%. Uh, enemy and boss encounters are thrilling, but repetitive. Uh, enemies have predictable moves. Yes, they choreograph the moves where people can learn the fight and beat it. This is something back from the World of Warcraft days when you're raiding against bosses. This type of choreograph or, or telegraph that bosses will do lets you give you an edge. It means it's repetitive. It means you learn the repetition. You then can defeat the boss and move on. Elden Ring did the same thing. In Elden Ring, it's the exact same thing. You can see them telegraph what they're going to do well in advance. Once you learn those move sets, you should be able to take things down without armor. In all honesty, that's how gamers, true gamers, can do that. Uh, design and choreograph of boss fights, a boss heavy game. Well, the that, that's the whole challenge of it, is it not? I, you know, largely lacks inclusion and representation. Black Myth Wukong characters lack diversity. So a shapeshifter is no longer diverse. The shapeshifter is no longer diverse. You know, this is a game about Chinese folklore of the Monkey King. Diversity didn't care that. He was a monkey back in when the lore came to be. It's the legend of the Monkey King. It's not the legend of the whatever diverse thing that you want in a video game. If it games don't need to have this, you make a good story, you make a game people are willing to play, you make a game difficult, you're going to have a much better time and a sense of accomplishment for being able to go through the game. This, the, the, all these points that they're putting up there means this game is going to be probably one of the best games that we have seen in the last few years. It's going to blow things out of the water. And I mean, unless the game is poorly optimized, which that's probably my number one sticking point with video games right now is the optimization to be able to play it on PC. That'll be the one thing that really makes or breaks games right now. But if you're complaining that there's not enough diversity in a game, um, and it's a good storyline. It, it, it's a story that's not sacrificing things to put other people on pedestals. Then it's going to be a good game. And these talking points are absolutely moot for Screen Ranty to come out with that. But you know what? I don't do this enough. I have a Patreon. I have YouTube memberships. I have all that fun stuff. If you guys like the content you see here, think about supporting the con me, the content creator, today. Uh, pick up a membership or even drop down a, what is it, a super chat or whatever YouTube does lets you leave a tip down below. Anyway, I'm your prog Canadian Phoenix in shadow. I'm signing off here. Have yourselves a great day and I will see you again very soon. Don't forget to like it.